Now we'll see one problem which relates to the EMF and internal resistance of a device. A battery of EMF 2.5 volts and internal resistance R is connected in series with a resistor of 45 ohms through an ammeter of resistance 1 ohm. The ammeter reads a current of 50 milliampere. Calculate the value of R, nothing but the internal resistance. The problem's visualization is like this. There is a battery. EMF of this battery is 2.5 volts. An internal resistance R is connected in series. Means this battery's internal resistance is R. We should find out the R according to the given data. In series with a resistor of 45 ohms. Means resistor is 45 ohms. Through an ammeter of resistance 1 ohm. Means resistance of ammeter is equal to 1 ohm. The ammeter reads a current of 50 amp milliamperes means IA means current read by the ammeter is 50 milliamperes. Calculate the R nothing but the internal resistance. The given question internal resistance R is connected in series with the resistor 45 through an ammeter of resistance 1 ohm. This means this resistor 45 ohms ammeter's resistance 1 ohm and this internal resistance R, these three are connected in series. Therefore, EMF is equal to E is equal to IR in place of R. We are getting what is the effective resistance R? We can write I R effective. What is the R effective resistance? R plus R A plus R. What is the EMF? 2.5 volts. Therefore, let me substitute 2.5 is equal to what is the current passing through the ammeter? 50 milliamperes. 50 into 10 power minus 3 amperes into what is the resistance? 45. What is the resistance through ammeter? 1 ohm. What is R? internal resistance so now it will be like this 2.5 by 50 into 10 power minus 3 is equal to 40 plus 5 plus 1 46 plus r so what is this value this 10 power minus 3 goes up 2.5 into 10 power 3 by 50 50 10 cube 1000 50 1000 20 times 1000 in 50 is 20 times 2.5 into 20 what is the answer 20 what is this one this one is equal to 46 plus r therefore 46 plus R is equal to what is 2.5 into 20? 50. Therefore, internal resistance is equal to 50 minus 46, 4 ohms. So, this is the internal resistance of the cell or a battery of EMF 2.5 volts, which has internal resistance 4 ohms, which is connected in series with a resistor of 45 ohms through an ammeter of resistance 1 ohms then it draws the current of 50 milliamperes. Now we will see one problem which is based on the balancing lengths of a meter bridge. In a meter bridge balance point is found to be at 39.5 centimeters from the end A when the resistor S is of 12.5 ohms determine the resistance of R. We know that in meter bridge the known resistance is R and uh, sorry the unknown resistance is R when the resistor S is of 12.5 ohms means S is 12.5 ohms. The formula for the balancing lengths or balancing points with respect to the given resistances in meter bridge is R by S is equal to L by 100 minus L. We should find out R. 
we know s we know l we know 100 minus l so what is the l balancing length or balancing point so what is this balancing point found to be 39.5 centimeters so as usual s is equal to the resistance or which uh, the known resistor how much 12.5 ohms and we know that 100 minus l is equal to therefore 100 minus 39.5 nothing but 60.5 centimeters 100 minus 39.5 is 60.5 centimeters so we should substitute l s and 100 minus l in the given formula then we can get the r value which is the unknown therefore r is equal to l by 100 minus l into s what is the l value 39.5 what is 100 minus l 60.5 into what is the s value 12.5 So the answer is like this. Cuts. Continue. When you calculate all these things, we will get the value of R is 8.16 ohms. Now we will see the problem and its content. The potentiometer arrangement a cell of EMF 1.25 volts gives a balance point at 35 centimeters length of the wire. If the cell is replaced by another cell and the balance point shifts to 63 centimeters, what is the EMF of the second cell? He is uh, giving uh, the relationship between the EMFs to the balancing points. So this is the potentiometer arrangement. Cell of EMF is 1.25 volts. 1.25 volts that is even gives a balance point at 35 centimeters corresponding l1 is equal to 35 centimeters length of the wire means the 100 centimeters is the length of the wire at 35 centimeters galvanometer reading shows zero that is said to be a balancing length if the cell is replaced by another cell and the balance point shifts to 63 centimeters means l2 becomes 63 centimeters what is the emf of the second cell e2 is equal to how much so relationship between emfs to the balancing point so e1 by e2 is equal to l1 by l2 we should find out e2 that's why e2 by e1 is equal to l2 by l1 so therefore e2 is equal to L2 by L1 into E1. Now we will sub substitute this L2, L1 and E1 values. Therefore E2 is equal to what is L2? 63 centimeters. What is L1? 35.0 centimeters. What is E1? 1.25 volts. Sixty-three by thirty-five, as usually seven is the common, so it will become nine by five into one point two five. So five one point two five we can get nine into one twenty-five by fifty into ten into ten. Sorry, it is into hundred. Here also it is into hundred. So 1.25 by 5, 125 by 500, this is 4 times, 9 by 4 is 2.25 volts. So for this EMF, uh, the balancing length should be 35 and 63 centimeters from the another end. Now we will see one problem which relates to the drift velocity and uh, the different dimensions of the conductor. The number density of free electrons in a copper conductor is 8.5 into 10 to the power of minus 28 meter power minus 3. That is the number density of free electrons. How long does an electron take 
to drift from one end of a wire 3 meters long to its another end. The area of cross section of the wire is 2 into 10 to the power of minus 6 meters square and it is carrying a current of 3 amperes. First of all, we should write what are the physical quantities that are there in the problem. Number density of free electrons in a copper conductor is number density n is equal to number density. Eight point five into ten to the power of minus twenty eight meter power minus three. How long does an electron take to drift from one end of a wire? Means he is asking what is the time taken to drift the electrons from one end of the conductor to the another end of the conductor, where the length of the conductor is three meters. From one end to another end is nothing but the length of the conductor. Means L is equal to length of the conductor this is 3 meters the area of cross section of the wire is a is equal to area of cross section area of cross section how much it is? 2.0 into 10 to the power of minus 6 meter square. And it is carrying a current of 3 amperes. How long does it an electron take to drift from one end of a wire 3 meters long? So the time taken for the drift velocity. So how much is the time? We should find out. We know that drift velocity is related to the number density and length of the conductor and area of the conductor and charge of each electron inside the conductor. And we know that time is equal to drift velocity is equal to length by time where time is equal to length by drift velocity. By mentioning all these things and substitute after substituting we will get all the things. So, which is required to solve the problem. So now we will substitute all these values in the given formula in the formula which is sufficient to get the information of the time to take drifting. We know that I is equal to N E A V D. From this expression we can write V D is equal to I by N E A. But Time taken for drifting is nothing but L by VD. Therefore, time taken is equal to L by VD. Already VD is I by NEA. So, therefore, time taken for drifting is equal to L N E A by I. Where L is equal to length of the conductor, 3 meters. Where n is equal to number density, 8.5 into 10 to the power of minus 28. Where E is equal to charge of each conductor, nothing but the free electrons. 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. Where A is equal to area of cross section of the wire, 2.0 into 10 to the power of minus 6. Whole divided by I is equal to amount of current, 3 amperes. 3 and 3 get cancelled. So, if you multiply all these things 8.5 into 1.6 into 2 and 10 power minus 28, 10 power minus 19 and 10 to the power of minus 6, we will get the answer like this. The time taken for drifting is 2.72 into 10 to the power of 4 seconds. If you converted these things into hours and minutes, it will be 7 hours 33 minutes. This is the time taken for drifting. So whenever a conductor have these many dimensions, this, are this type of dimensions, so this is the time taken for the drifting of the electrons. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.